Good Friday afternoon to you. It's 4 o'clock time for Sports for CLE. Hope your weekend is off to a great start. Uh, talk a little bit of Cavs as um, a little later in the show. Sam Miko, HoopsWire.com will join us. Uh, some free agent signings that we'll want to tell you about. Uh, but of course, we begin by talking Browns. Um, the Deshaun Watson disciplinary hearing three days wrapped up out in Delaware. And take a look at this tweet from uh, Dan Graziano of um, ESPN. Um, Sue L. Robinson asked for post-hearing briefs, which will be due the week of July 11th. No set timeline for Robinson decision, um, a source told Graziano. Robinson is expected to take her time. Her findings are expected to be issued in the form of a written opinion, and uh, there are some thoughts that it could be up to 25 pages um, as a written um, opinion on the amount of suspension or no suspension, and that would be what the appeal process would be going about is that written opinion, which would be very important um, to any appeal if it is uh, heard or if you can add on to it the way that this decision is crafted by Justice Robinson. Um, let's, as a point of reference, let's go back and take a look at sources telling us what we have heard um, about this. Case presented by the NFL included no evidence of violence, threat, force, or, or coercion by Deshaun Watson. Um, also, the NFL admitted that the punishment they're seeking, indefinite suspension of at least one year, is unprecedented. NFL also admitted that its security director investigated the Robert Kraft situation. No punishment was imposed on Kraft for similar type situations. Based on those points, NFLPA will push for no discipline of Watson, and um, Judge Robinson again will issue a decision that will be in writing um, after the briefs are filed um, on July 11th. Week of July 11th is one that is. So we're no closer to a resolution. The hearing has been heard. Um, the other thing from a pro football talk, uh, again, Mike Florio, pro football talk, who has been, um, you know, some Browns fans don't like that he's come out on the side of the league a lot. Um, after the hearing, he's come more on the side of Watson. So a uh, distinct sense of optimism for Watson emerging from the three-day disciplinary hearing uh, before Judge Sue L. Robinson based on the quality of evidence submitted by the league in support of the quest for a minimum suspension one year. If Watson doesn't receive a significant suspension, there will be strong negative reaction from some. However, there's a distinct chance that Robinson's decision will fall far and far short of the outcome the NFL wants, which is that um, at least a year away from it. All right, a lot to unpack there with that. Let's welcome in G. Bush. He is the host uh, of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show as well as Barbershop uh, from 8 until noon, 92.3 The Fan. Um, G. Bush, it's sounding positive, I would say, um, from what sources are reporting from those um, disciplinary hearings that went on three days. There, there's a lot of, to, to unpack there. Um, I, I guess the, the one thing that, that I saw, and, and I think a lot of people were really keen into, um, and I, I don't know the exact language, but uh, no no force, no violent, no, uh, no coercion uh, was involved. Uh, and, and with Deshaun Watson uh, in the testimonies that they brought forth from on behalf of the league. So if you're the league and you present the cases, and so we already start with, there was no indictment from a grand jury, okay? Um, then you you present your cases. Out of the 12 cases, I believe, I think they presented five. Uh, out of those five cases, um, no coercion, no, uh, you, you know, no force, no any of that, no violence or anything associated with that so when you when you start you know boiling down to as low as common denominators we start to ask yourself okay well what are we suspending here um granted nobody will will say that you know uh your behavior in in, in a place of business is, is something that um i think anybody will frown upon and i always i you know i, I have to feel like I, I should be obligated to say that all the time you know you don't you, you know <laughs> my mom would be like hey you, you put yourself in a situation where you know you ain't supposed to be doing that kind of stuff in no place of business anyway. 
right? Like those, that's just the, the way a lot of people come out on, on, on that end. But when you take a look at it, there's a couple of things that hit. First, there, he is, so it's basically saying they went along with it. He didn't force anybody to do anything. And then when you get down to the second part, the league is admitting unprecedented. They're saying, hey, unprecedented means there's been no other no other cases like this. He's going to get a punishment that has never been seen before but, uh, in terms of these type of, uh, of, of allegations and, and the punishment handed out by the league. But in the very next sentence, in the very next text message, or very next uh, Twitter, uh, 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 you know, uh, screenshot, you say, however, we do, we must also admit that Robert Kraft, we looked at it and we found no wrongdoing and we just basically, you know, there was no, no, no sort of uh, punishment, no sort of recommendation for punishment. Now, my job is, as a, if I'm Deshaun Watson's camp, I want to dig a little further. I want to say, okay, well, what did you find in that? So can I see the investigation notes on that? Can I get some discovery on what you guys, how how deep you deeply you looked, how much you looked, what did you find, what were your findings, and why did you, you come out on the air, air on the side of not giving him any, any punishment, right? That's my next question. They might be doing that in the briefings, but uh, for me, the main question I, I say, and this is, a, this is a tough one for people to swallow, the NFL should learn from this. If you really want, if, if it turns out that Deshaun Watson does not get the indefinite suspension or the year suspension that they want, well, then they should just just make sure that when these things come out, come up, no matter if you're a player, a coach, an owner, a GM, a, a media relations person, or the janitor, if this stuff come up, you might want to go through a lengthy system so you can punish everybody. Because if it comes down to a point, Deshaun Watson doesn't get the, the suspension they they don't want, they don't, they don't want to get. Guess what? It was because that they didn't give any sort of suspension to Robert Kraft, and they can't. You can't justify that. Yeah, and and, and I I agree with you. I think as you said, I think there were some situations that you don't want a guy that's the head of your business or the face of your franchise to be in, but owners shouldn't be in that situation either. So, uh, you know, that that's, I, I, I completely understand the point you're making. And I think people that have a set opinion one way or another, be open-minded to listen to what's going on and, and, um, yeah. and then, and then go from there. It, there's, it's going to be a very tough decision for uh, both Sue L. Robinson and the league. There are so much this, to look at. One one final thing: if 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 they would have, and this is, if they would have came out and said, Daniel Snyder, Robert Kraft, I know you weren't, uh, you didn't commit a crime, you didn't get charged for it, but there is a level of a fine, a draft pick, a suspension, any of that. If they would have at least had a hearing and, and gave him some level of punishment, then guess what? People would have had nothing to stand on with Deshaun Watson because we could have pointed to say, hey, look. They, they punished one of the most powerful people in the world. They're about that life. They are about doing what's, what's right. And, and so if they got punished, you know good and well you're going to get punished as a quarterback or as a player in this in this organization or in the league. So if they would have just came out and did something, this wouldn't even be here. I would have had no legs to stand on. Nobody would either. Because at the end of the day, all you want is due process, right, under the same same circumstances. All right, uh, let's head to the voicemail of Truth and Reason. Uh, this one uh, about the Deshaun Watson hearings. Yes, man, I'm a kid back. Long time Cleveland Browns fan, lifelong Browns fan, and uh, frequent caller. Yeah, so I'm just getting a little concerned about all the prolonged hearings. I think it's good that they're giving him a chance to make his case, the NFL making their case. It's just that the, uh, the ESPN and all those other sports networks don't have nothing to talk about. So they're just giving their two cents, which really don't matter because nobody knows the outcome. But again, I made this point earlier, and I just wanted to reemphasize it. There's been a lot of guys that won the Super Bowl, Jeff Hotzeller, Brad Johnson, uh, Trent Dilford, all those guys, Joe Flecko, that wasn't prolific uh, elite quarterback. And I think we can, with a good defense, we got a great defense. We got great special teams, a great running game. I think, and Kobe Brissett is a veteran NFL quarterback. I think we can do okay and make it to the playoffs. So I'm not saying we can win our division. I'm not saying we're going to win the Super Bowl. 
But I think we can have a good season uh, until Deshaun comes back as he's suspended for a whole season. Just like to hear your thoughts on that. Thanks. Bye. Um, it, it, gee, Bush, I don't think he's gonna. I don't think he's getting a, a full year, and, and I've kind of moved off of what I thought. I thought it was gonna be twelve games. I don't know that it's even gonna be that many. But but what I will say is, um, it's awfully tough the way the 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 rules slant towards offense to win with strictly defense. There there are no more eighty five Bears, and there's not going to be because the NFL doesn't want there to be based on the way they <laughs> the way they call the game and the way they give the breaks to the wide receivers. Um, but yeah, the Browns can be very 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 competitive right in the mix for a playoff uh, playoff positioning with Jacoby Brissett as, as their quarterback for six, eight games, something like that? You know what? Here, here's I, I like to be fair. I, I try to come out and be fair. I, I try to keep it mi- down the middle when I, when I see certain things. So I can't be no hypocrite. I can't sit here and say that Baker Mayfield, right, the Cleveland Browns made a decision to move off Baker Mayfield because they realized that they could not win with that level of quarterback play, Right. We, a lot of people in this market have said that. But then again, I can't come back on here with the same conversation and, and, and say, well, with a defense, running game, Jacoby Brissett, you know, he can kind of get us. I think we can make the playoffs. No, 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 no. I can't do that. I can't, I can't do that. Because it, 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 it Baker Mayfield is better than Jacoby Brissett. And they made a move. And gave up three first round picks, gave up a bunch of a bunch of uh, guaranteed money to get Deshaun Watson, regardless of what the allegations were. And the reason they did that is because they had already crunched, crunched the numbers. They saw the film. They understood. And I'll tell you one thing: that is no more. It's not happening no more. I, there's a couple of thing outliers in, in professional sports that I wish we can get rid of. The one is the Tom Brady in the sixth round. Uh, the other one is let's build it through the draft like Golden State. Uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, you tell me you get three Hall of Famers, right? I, I just picked three of the Hall of Famers and one in the second round. Those are those are mirages, people. Man, listen, bless their heart. Those guys we talk about is, is in the Hall of Fame. You're not going to be out here with Brad Johnsons of the world. You know why? Because ha, did you watch Buffalo in, in, in Kansas City last year? D, Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes – took turns scoring at will, at will. I mean, they get, the, the only reason the Bills lost is because they had 13, 14 seconds on the clock and they went 80 yards. I don't understand how people are figuring this not going to happen anymore. The Browns can stay com- competitive if, if Jacoby Process has played four to six games. You can do some of that stuff and put your special teams and play good defense. But if you, you're talking about a, a division in the AFC that just got Russell Wilson, uh, uh, AFC, where we th- we we we, s- we think uh, Derek Carr is garbage. We say Derek Carr, he's terrible. All he does is throw for four thousand yards. You got all these guys, Herbert. Hey, I, I just watched in two back-to-back weeks. I thought I saw Joe Burrow throw for a thousand yards at the end of the season. No more can you just run the ball. No, I no disrespect to Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, Deonis Johnson. I love you guys to death, uh, but no. We need Deshaun Watson if we want to get where we want. G. Bush and I are going to step aside, take a quick time out. Uh, we will take a look at Pro Football Focus's top 10 rosters in the NFL. Sports for CLE. Talking Browns. Stay with us. Come back to go forward. Back to learning new things. Back to pursuing your dreams. Try C has flexible learning options to fit your life. And every year, more than 1,000 local companies provide Tri-C students with real-world learning. The right education can boost your lifetime earning power by hundreds of thousands of dollars. Start now with a college education you can afford. Tri-C, where futures begin. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just the mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. 
The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. We continue talking Browns with G. Bush from the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, as well as 92.3 The Fans, The Barber Shop. Uh, you can listen to him 8 till noon on 92.3 The Fan on Saturdays. All right, top 10 rosters from Pro Football Focus. Number one, Buffalo Bills, two Buccaneers, three Chargers, four the Rams, five Packers, six the Browns. Uh, so the Browns check in at number six and G. Bush. That's pretty fair. I, you know, I, I'd say they're knocking on the door of a top five roster in the NFL without question. I had to turn my mic off for a second. I, I don't know about that. Like, let me look at that. I, I, okay, so the Buffalo Bills. Yep. Uh, I, I, I think the Bills are a, a solid roster. I, I think they have, uh, <laughs> I think they got Josh Allen. <laughs> I, have, I think they got Stefan Diggs. But uh, other than that, I, I, there's like, see, this is the thing here. This is the thing here. I, I understand it. I get it. I understand people don't know how long Deshaun Watson is going to be there. But I'm going to be honest. Like, you know, when you look at that that list right there, they got a couple teams up there. They got the Pack. How are the Packers right there? I'm confused. The Packers just lost their best receiver. I guess they got, you know, they still got Aaron Rodgers, but. I, I don't understand how the Packers are are that high on the list. I, I like Aaron Jones. I like uh, I like you know I, you know Aaron Rodgers. But to me, I just keep saying it. I just keep talking about it. If you want to go roster for roster, position for position, well, all those teams above us, the Browns have the best offensive line amongst those guys. If you want to talk about you know there may be uh, you know an area where they're a little weak at is is a wide receiver group, but. I mean, they got two. They got a, a top, at least one or two defensive end in the league. Miles Garrett. They got a top. You know, they hate no Denzel Ward a little bit, but he's a top five corner. Let's just be clear about that. He's a top five corner. Uh, when you look at it consistently, they got another defensive end that that has a lot of skill. When you take a look, the best running backs, the two best running back tandem in the game, and you still have Amari Cooper. And and that and, and if you look at it, and you take in consideration that you got a guy like. Uh, you know, you, you got two good tight ends. And plus, you, you, we just talked about Deshaun Watson uh, and, and his ability to run and extend plays. I just think sometimes it's it's one of those waves right now. It's one of those waves where it's the summertime. The Browns getting a lot of bad publicity. They don't like the fact that they gave them $230 million guaranteed. It's a lot of that stuff going around. That I, I think that's one of the reasons you don't see the Browns on any primetime games. But... To be honest with you, when it's all when the dust settles and you you have to start playing games, uh, people are gonna say people are gonna start saying, "Wow, this Browns team is really talented." Wow, this Browns team, man. We played the Browns the other week, man. They're really good. I mean, I thought it was just Deshaun Watson, but wow, I forgot how good the running game was, man. Hey, Amari Cooper looks like the best receiver they had in a long time. Hey, man, where'd they get this? JOK, these young guys, JOK and Newsom are running around. Those guys are really athletic and linebacker. I think you'll hear a lot of that, um, and especially in the first four games where there's some winnable games, I think people will start to finally realize what kind of roster they got. I, I think so. So what you're saying, and, and I'd probably agree with that, is this is weighted very heavily towards the quarterback position because you're saying yes. you're saying Josh Allen, Tom Brady, Justin Herbert, Matthew Stafford, and then Aaron Rodgers. So okay, yeah, yeah we, we we know what we get. We yeah. know what we get, and all. And I'll have a problem if they said. Those quarterbacks are better than Deshaun Watson. I wouldn't even argue with that. that so I, I think it's, it's very quarterback weighted. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, along those lines, this is from ESPN.com, a similar ranking system. Biggest strength uh, for the Browns, they say the run game. Biggest weakness, defensive tackle. Um, and, you, you know, they mentioned Clowney, but then it's Elliott, Bryant, Winfrey, Sheldon Day, Tommy Togiai. Uh, and then the X factor they say um, Donovan Peoples-Jones. They mentioned Cooper, David Bell, but Donovan Peoples-Jones 
um, who could really, you know, elevate into a, a pretty successful number two opposite of um, Amari Cooper. Um, I get that. The other thing that I think, G. Bush, I think they're, they know what they have at defensive tackle. They're not going to ask these guys to do some of the things that other teams will ask their defensive tackles to do. No. Uh, this is – their defensive tackles, you won't notice it that much um, because, you know, Jadavion Clowney is a really good run defender. As a matter of fact, that's the best part of his game. Uh, you know, I would actually to be truthful. I would like to see Miles Garrett more disruptive in the run game. I would like to see him in you know, some of those TFLs. We haven't seen that all too often where, you know, he gets around the guy, he blows up a play in the backfield. We need those type of plays. But when you got a guy like JOK, I was just spot shadowing him. And, and I was just, you know, you know, summertime, I, I you know, I, I watch the USFL. I watch anything. I watch girls, uh, girls JV football if I could find some, bro. <laughs> so I'm just in the film room, you know what I'm saying? And I just look at it and I, I'm watching and see what, what makes JOK so good. Man, traditionally, you know, linebackers, they, they like to, you got to, you know, coaches always say, engage with a lineman, get them off you, press, and, you know, uh, uh, rip and, and keep your outside shoulder free and make the tackle, right? JOK is a different type breed. I mean, this guy guards and tackles come off free. No, just clean release to the second level. And generally speaking, if you got a guard that comes off free freely on a guy that's 250, let alone a guy like, like that's 225, like JOK, it's usually nights, lights out. Man, JOK is so lightning quick. It's like playing, he's playing basketball with these guys. I mean, He's just giving them two or three moves, and he's past the, the guard, the tackle, the center that's trying to climb on, climb to the next level. He's so fast that they can't get a hand on him. I've never seen – I said, this is when I knew the game of football passed me by because I said, oh, my goodness, there's guys out here doing stuff like that. We would have got taken out of the game for stuff like that. We got yelled at for running around blocks. You got to take the block on. You're running around the block. Don't run around block. Listen, that's all he does, and he does it at a very high level. When you start to see that type of a athleticism, those are the guys that are going to be making the plays. Him and Grant Delp is screaming off the edge, and then, you know, good luck, you know, getting outside on Clowney and, 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 and Miles Garrett. So I, I think people underestimate. Now, it's, this is not the, once again, it's not your Ravens 2000, Buccaneers 0102, where you got Sapp and uh, Sam Adams and Ter Tony Saragusa, those big guys in the, in the middle. It ain't like that no more. Now it's all about getting a field pass rush, m making people cut three, four yards before they want to get there. And the Browns will find somebody to put in there. And don't forget, you got big old Perrion Winfrey. He's going to have an opportunity to eat. Hey, Perrion, you talked all that stuff. Three weeks is coming. We want to see something, bro. G. Bush and I are going to step aside, take a quick time out. Other side of the break, uh, we'll turn our attention to the running back position. Sports for CLE will be right back. Stay with us. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. The Greater Cleveland Sports Hall of Fame celebrates the star athletes and notable sports figures who were born or have made their home in Greater Cleveland. It tells the story of discipline, commitment, perseverance, sportsmanship, and excellence in achievement. It encourages and inspires those who believe in sport and its direct impact on the well-being of our community. Go to clevelandsportshall.com or follow us on Twitter at GCLE Sports HOF for more details.
We continue talking Browns with G. Bush. Uh, you can see him on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show YouTube Monday through Friday, 11 to 1. Also, you can talk to him, 92.3, the fans, the barbershop, uh, 8 until noon on Saturdays. Pro Football Focus, uh, the most elusive running backs in the NFL. And uh, this is based on missed tackles forced per attempt. Uh, Javante Williams uh, from the Broncos is one. Cream Hunt number two. Jernis Johnson five. Nick Chubb six. Uh, G. Bush, that is what we call a loaded backfield for your Cleveland Browns. Man, oh man, these guys are so loaded. These guys are. <laughs> when you got Nick Chubb, when you got Jernis Johnson, when when you got Kareem Hunt, you talk about what they can do and what they can do at a, at a high level. All of them give you different types of feels right there, right? Nick Chubb does it in a little more subtle way than, than Kareem Hunt does it. Kareem Hunt can jump over you. Kareem Hunt is just like a, a, a Tasmanian devil the way he runs the football. He never gives you a solid surface to tackle you. He never gives you a solid uh, a leg or a clean shot. He's always bouncing around like a pinball. And so when you got that, you're going to miss a lot of tackles because he's very unorthodox in the way he runs the football. Almost runs like out of control. Nick Chubb, very patient, you know, very patient. Very rarely see Nick Chubb get hit in the backfield. He always usually, you ever watch TV and you watch some running backs, you'd be like, man, there was a hole way over there. He didn't see the hole. He ran into three of his linemen. You never talk about that with Nick Chubb. He's always finding a cutback lane. And then the thing about Nick Chubb is scary speed. Like, he's big, but if you watch, Nick Chubb don't get caught. Go back and watch the game. Go watch the Atlanta game. Atlanta, 98 yards a couple years ago. Watch what he did it against the Bengals last year. When Nick Chubb, he's a big man, he, put, he picks him up and puts him down. Uh, he's not getting caught. And then all of a sudden, he got what I call, like to call the five-finger discount. He had that stiff arm. <laughs> he put that stiff arm up there. It's him and Derrick Henry, man. Ah, uh, listen, he he listen. You, you not you gotta get low on Nick Chubb. You gotta get low. And then Dearness Johnson is different. He's slippery, man. He's a slasher, man. He like he's if, if Larry Hughes, right? <laughs> Remember back in there, Larry Hughes if Larry Hughes was a running back, he'd run like Dearness Johnson. Real, he looked like he kind of, you know, too cool for school a little bit. He removed it around, but the way he slashed, the way he cuts, he never gets hit hard either. And each one of those guys got good hands in their backfield. Each one of those guys don't really fumble the football. And each one of them have a, a distinct running style. Um, and, and it's just like, and I'm going to tell you what, hey, if you have not noticed, go back and rewind these tapes. You, you heard it here first. Jerome Ford is going to show a lot of people a lot of something in, in, this, uh, in this preseason. Because you're not going to see much of Chubb. You're not going to see much of Hunt. It's going to be a lot of Dearness Johnson and a lot of Ford. And I'm telling you, Ford is a nice – listen, he's going to make this team. He's going to open a lot of eyes. The Browns have a stable of backs, and it's probably one of the best collection of backs I've seen in a long time in terms of just one through four, one through five with the ability to run the football. They nice up there. All right, so that begs the question. Do you think they trade one of them away before the season, and would you do that? Oh, my goodness. Well, we, we know. Well, we, you, basically, you saying, are they trading Kareem Hunt or Dearness Johnson? <laughs> yeah. Because Nick Chubb, Chubb ain't going nowhere. We cool on that one. Um, I talked about this a little bit. I, I think I wrote a blog on it. I, I, I would have to, and here's one reason why I would keep one of them. i keep both of them together. Because I look at it in terms of, uh, of it like this. If Deshaun Watson is going to miss some games, I want to be full I want to be full speed. I need all of my running backs. I need everything, right? Because you think about it, Deshaun Watson is hurt. What if Nick Chubb go down? So Chubb go, go down. You got De Deshaun Watson is out eight games. That could get ugly very quickly. <laughs> like, you, you, that could get ugly if you don't have Kareem Hunt because you traded him off for like a third-round pick or something crazy. Right, you, you now with, with between Jarnis Johnson and the rookie uh, as your starting running back. But I, what I would like to do is I like to have both of those guys, and I'm gonna lean on them. Jacoby Brissett, we're gonna run that play action game, and then and then plus two. Give give. I, I think one of the things that make people think this a little bit is is Kareem Hunt pretty much missed the whole last year. Kareem Hunt pretty much missed most of last year, and I'll take a look at what he brings to the table when he is running. Go back and look at the 2020. When you have both Hunt 
and Chubb running the football, the Browns are are, are really rough to, to mess with. I, I would like to see both of those get really good, good a lot of good touches in, in the first part of the season. I keep them stay packed. I would have to revisit with Kareem Hunt because, you know, obviously he said, came out a couple weeks ago, hey, I want to retire as a Brown. Mm-hmm. I think that has a lot to do with how well and how healthy he stays this year. Yeah, I'm with you. And the other thing that I would say is, by and large, the value for running backs in terms of draft picks, you usually don't get – if you think you're going to get a one or a two, you're probably not. So why would you yeah. Why would you trade that away? Um, before we go to break, this is kind of interesting. So 2022 NFL season, what milestones could be reached from NFL.com? And this one – Um, is really interesting for Nick Chubb. Never been done before. Uh, Will Nick Chubb average five-plus yards per carry for an unprecedented fifth straight season? So if Nick Chubb can, again, average five yards carry, like he has the last four, he becomes the first of all the guys that run the football in the NFL. Nobody has averaged five yards carry five years in a row. Nick Chubb has the ability to do that. I, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't want anything more than to see Nick Chubb come out here and get a get a get a get a bell cow year. Like Nick Chubb come out the gates, and he, he, you say he get 1,500, 1,600 yards. I, I really want that for him because you gotta think about it. Since he came into the league, he's always been around a thousand, and he hasn't even been getting the majority of the touches like that. I mean, he was splitting time his rookie year. Uh, you know, wasn't really in the rotation like that until halfway through. You look at a couple years, he's missed some games. He's always played with Kareem Hunt. I just would like to see what they would do if they if they they, they give him the amount of touches that he, he deserved. Because you talk about it, five a pop. You know how many running backs have come through this league? And, and, and this is a league that was built on running backs. This is, this is Tony Dorsett, O.J. Simpson, Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, Gail Sa- This is, that was the league, right? They were they were once the quarterbacks in this league. And you telling me ain't nobody in their first five years average five a pop? That's special, man. That is special, man. Uh, um, and the great the crazy thing about it is, you know, Nick Chubb to me, I mean, he's just like he's a he's a solid dude. I don't even hear from him. You don't even yep. you just want to root for him, man. You just want like you don't hear from him. He ain't never said nothing bad. He even he even went out his way to say something nice about Baker. Like he just like he he, he looked like a dude that you said, man, I could have a beer with Dick Chubb, but then again, he don't even drink. <laughs> <laughs> G- he, don't drink. he just said, I gotta go, I gotta go to a church on Sunday. I can't I can't hang out. G. Bush and I are going to step aside, take another time out. Other side of the break, uh, we'll turn our attention to Baker Mayfield. Some opinions about what uh, should happen with Baker Sports for CLE. We'll be right back. Stay with us. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just the mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. We continue talking uh, Browns football with G. Bush uh, from 92.3 The Fan and the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. All right, let's listen to this um, from the Rich Eisen Show, RG3, talking about what the situation and how the situation with Baker Mayfield should be resolved. I think the Browns should offer the olive branch to Baker and, and ask him to stay if Deshaun Watson gets suspended for a significant amount of time. Baker's proven that, in, you know, in, in this city, he can go win a playoff game, get you to the playoffs, do all those things. Last year he played hurt and didn't and wasn't very effective. But the bottom line is Baker Mayfield's better than Jacoby Brissett. That's just the bottom line. 
And if you're going to have to play a full season with a guy, your best option is to go back to Baker Mayfield and beg him to stay and then present it to him in the same way that you just did, Rich. This is an opportunity for you to go prove yourself to the next to the next team that you're going to go play for. Uh, G. Bush, again, I, I've said this a couple of times uh, this week when people have brought this up. Baker Mayfield has not been at any of the mini camps. They've installed a new offense, um, and they're doing it for guys that have different skill sets. It, it doesn't really match anymore. Um, I, I would agree with him. Baker Mayfield's probably a higher ceiling than Jacoby Brissett. Just doesn't fit here. All right, let me give – since, since I, I've tried to approach this every way I can, and, you know, me being the consummate professional that I am, I keep giving real-world examples as to why this doesn't really work. The example that I keep getting from people in the local and the national media is, let me, why can't Baker just come back and we could just plug him in? All right, well, let me just give you this. So you break up with, you break up with your longtime girlfriend. You guys have been broken up for about a year. She hasn't been dating anybody, hasn't been doing anything. Then all of a sudden you see on Facebook, so-and-so is in a relationship. Susie, Jane, Tom, whatever, whoever the person is, is in a relationship, right? So you think you're my, well, it ain't been that long. I mean, we've been together, what, five years? We've only been broke up eight months. I mean, I could probably text her and get away with that, right? She's, come on, this new guy. And all of a sudden, she doesn't return your calls. No return calls. You're just like, what's going on? And maybe she's busy. Then you see them, right? Then you see them out and about. They're at Crocker Park. They're hanging out. Maybe they're at the mall, you know, at a nice restaurant, and you see them. And she says, hey, how you doing? Doing good. Guy pulls up. He pulls up in the new Mercedes hanging out. Hey, uh, how you doing? Garrett? Garrett? Yeah, Garrett Bush, big fan of yours. Big fan of you. Hey, yeah, big fan of yours. Hey, uh, nice meeting you. I, I'm great with your work. We got to go. We're, we're off to Tahiti. We're, uh, we, we just got to engage like last week. And you get you sitting there watching the dude who's a great guy with a Mercedes Benz taking your ex girl to Tahiti and got engaged. It's not happening, dog. It's a wrap. Yeah. She ain't hid nothing from you. It ain't no coming back from that. Baker Mayfield can't just come back in and walk in. People done. They we, we got bills in people's names now. Hey, good good luck stealing my wife. She got an electric bill. She got to pay for it. <laughs> That's in her stipend. <laughs> so no, it doesn't work, man. It sounds it sounds practical. Sounds like you should be able to just do that. Everything to change. Just a new offense, new terminology. It's three different quarterbacks in a room. People done moved on. And Baker even told you, look, there had to be some reaching out or something. But for the most part. We're both happy with who we're with. There it is. Yeah. All right. Uh, along those lines, this is um, former Seahawk linebacker K.J. Wright um, from the I Am an Athlete Tonight on Sirius XM. It's a, it's a podcast. Um, he's a free agent currently. One of the teams he's considering signing with is the Seahawks. And uh, he was asked about the quarterback situation with Seattle. They say you go back to Seattle this year, right? Who would you want under center? I just <laughs> Baker, Mike, and Land over there. Who would KJ Wright want to lead his team if he went back to Seattle? To I'll tell you, not Baker Mayfield. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go <laughs> not not um not Drew well, Lock. We ain't gonna play those games. We ain't gonna play those games. I'm team Geno all day. Geno, I'm gonna tell everybody Geno to win this job. I like yeah, that. I like that. And, and, and when you look at Geno, he went to the Jets, and um, it was tough. It was it was rough. It was rough in New York. Yeah. G. Bush, for whatever reason, players around the league, we heard Robbie Anderson, we hear, hear K.J. Wright. And again, I'm not trying to beat up on, on Baker Mayfield. I think he's an NFL quarterback. He's got to change the, the perception of him, though. See, this is, man, it, it, somebody said it like this. And somebody, you know, they said that, you know, and I, I, I balked at this. And I, people say, you know, Baker's a sober Manziel. And I, you people laugh and joke and ha, ha, ha about it. But there's two things that are, are quite, um, they're, they're quite evident about both Baker and Johnny Manziel. Both of them are unapologetically not about to just plea bargain down to nothing. 
right? They're not going to, um, like Johnny was like, yo, I'm going to party and still play football. And if you don't want me to play football, who cares? I'm still going to party. Like, he's like, that's just who I am. Baker Mayfield is along those lines. I believe that I'm the best person out here. I ain't going back to nobody. I'm not groveling. I'm about. I'm not about to, I ain't about to beg for my position. I'm going to just show you this is how I roll and I'm going to do it my way. Now, listen, when you, it's ha- so hard to get to the highest level in the world. Like, it, it, think about it. Think about it. You know, we're in, we're in the media. It's like being like we get to the highest level in our profession. And then what we've been doing that long, We this is how we got here. Then, you know, this is the way, hey, hey, hey I'm going to tell these stories. I'm going to just be G. Bush. That's all I could be. But imagine you get there and they say, look, that's cool, but you got to do about 17 other things, too. And I'm like, well, what if you never learned those 17 other things? It's hard for you to plea bargain down and to humble yourself and have to go back and retrace your steps. Because guess what? What you've been doing so your whole life has worked. What you've been doing got you to the highest level, where whatever that may be. And for you to have to go down, retrace your steps down the mountain and say, well, listen, you could have you, you could have read defense a little better. You, you could have had more communication with your receivers out there. You, because here's the thing. I always tell people, you auditioning for somebody else. You, if you think Odell Beckham Jr. is the only opinionated receiver in the game, every team got him. Stephon Diggs, every team got him. Everybody want the ball. Yeah, hey, hey, DK Metcalf, I'm sure he's going to dye his hair purple or pink or whatever it's going to be, and he's going to say, I need this ball. So when you don't ha- handle one right, the, the, the team is like, well, listen, I, I mean, I got it. I got three or four receivers. Hi, we, he has to be better at, at, at diffusing that type of stuff, right? So all of these things are things he could work on. And me, myself, always. I don't know many employers that go back to their employees and say, hey, bring, hey, look, I'll do whatever it takes. It's usually the opposite way around. He could have finessed it. He could put it out there. And what he should have done, and I'm not even going to take 10% on this. He should have came out and said, when that guy asked him, in, in, at the Oklahoma uh, practice, he should have said, look, uh, you know, right now I'm under contract with the Cleveland Browns. Um, you know, and that, you know, this is a business, man. If, if my number is called, they want me to come back. I'm there. Matter of fact, I'm coming back. I'm going to be in the facility uh, when training camp starts. It, you know, I'll do whatever they want me to do. And if that, if that includes coming out there and playing some games, I'm just looking to rehabilitate my arm, get back out there and start playing the game I love. And that's just what I'm here to do. If they did that and the Cleveland Browns came back and said, no, stay home, Baker, well, then guess what? Guess who looks good? Yep. Baker, you look good. You yep. look like the, the, the grown-up in the room. And three teams might say, you know what? He, he gets it now. Come on over here. We might be able to do something with you. G. Bush and I are going to take one more time out of the side of the break. Uh, we will take a look at the 2022 head coaching rankings by CBSSports.com. Stay with us. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. The Greater Cleveland Sports Hall of Fame celebrates the star athletes and notable sports figures who were born or have made their home in Greater Cleveland. It tells the story of discipline, commitment, perseverance, sportsmanship, and excellence in achievement. It encourages and inspires those who believe in sport and its direct impact on the well-being of our community. Go to clevelandsportshall.com or follow us on Twitter at GCLE Sports HOF for more details. We continue talking sports with G. Bush from the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, 92.3 The Fan. Let's take a look. This is from CBS Sports, 2022 head coaching rankings. Um, They have Andy Reid, number one, Sean McVay, two, Bill Belichick, three, Mike Tomlin, four, John Harbaugh, five. Kevin Stefanski uh, checks in at 13. After one year in Cleveland, Stefanski looked a sure bet to steady a long, shaky line of Browns coaches, uh, but the picture is cloudier now. Um, 
G. Bush, there's, there was one really good year and one not so good year. So, um, again, I, maybe we don't know exactly what the Browns have in Kevin Stefanski. I think it's, it's probably closer to the year one than the year two, but we'll see. I think Kevin Stefanski, he should be, you know, he, not, he might not show it, but he should be fired up. And I'm going to tell you why he should be fired up. Um, he, he's being challenged. You know, you finally get an opportunity to say, the body of work that was put out on the field last year was not me. It was, wasn't what I was calling. Yeah, it may have looked like I wasn't calling certain plays, but then again, we go back to the quarterback, which is the most important position. Maybe, maybe he wasn't healthy enough to be out there, to be throwing the football or doing what he needed to, to accomplish the game plan that Kevin Stefanski wanted. But at the end of the day, like I said before, we talked about the trickle-down theory. Trickle-down economics, right? OBJ, mm, you're a receiver. Receivers are, are expendable. Mm -hmm. So if it ain't working between you and a quarterback, unless you Jerry Rice, guess what? Chances are you're going to be finding a new, new spot. Baker Mayfield, now it's on you. Oh, 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 you don't have anybody to blame now. OBJ's gone. Now it's on you. Oh, you can't blame the injury because you came back. You said you were ready to play and it didn't play so well. So now... You up out of here. Now, you you ain't nobody to blame. Now it's to Kevin Stefanski. Now, yes, one year, great. Coach of the year. Did your thing. Now, we're going to see what you're going to do. Because now, you got a fresh blank slate. If he comes out and he has Jacoby Brissett looking like the, the early version, the late version of 2020 Baker Mayfield, the run game looks, go looks going. It looks like Nick Chubb is getting the ball on the goal line. We could see Kareem Hunt. And Nick Chubb in the backfield at the same time. Maybe Anthony Schwartz get a little end around. And maybe we can hit field goals because we can spend a fourth-round pick on Kay York. If all those things work out, all of a sudden, Kevin Stefanski is back to the top of the food chain as a genius. They'll start talking about everybody's in the Ivy League. They'll use the same old generic uh, uh, montages about this, this, this team led by D. Podesta. This deep, this the statistics in the Ivy League prowess of this front office money ball, but with football, they'll start doing all that stuff again. Uh, if he can get these dudes to play, and when Deshaun Watson comes, then he'll really be known as a genius because then there'll be people open, there'll be throws that we didn't see, they'll be they'll be running RPOs. <laughs> and the first time we want to run an RPO, I'm telling you, we're gonna lose our mind. Oh my. The, what is the last time you've seen an RPO with the Browns? People go crazy. He'll, he'll be right back at it. But it's the opposite of that. He, he got to make it. Yep. He has to hold the fort down to Deshaun Watson get here, and that should be his whole goal. G. Bush, as always, great stuff. Appreciate the time and the insight. Thanks very much. G. Bush, Appreciate make sure it. you catch him. Uh, Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, 11 to 1 on YouTube, Monday through Friday. Also, 92.3 The Fan from uh, noon until, or from 8 until noon on Saturdays. We're going to step aside, take a quick time out, talking some Cavs free agent signings with Sam Amico from HoopsWire.com. Straight ahead when Sports for CLE continues. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just the mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. We turn our attention to the Cavs uh, 
NBA teams able to negotiate with free agents uh, and come to terms, but the contracts won't become official for a few more days. So the Cavs uh, did what a lot of people thought they would. Uh, they re-signed Ricky Rubio three years, $18 million. Let's welcome in Sam Amico from HoopsWire.com. Sam, we'll get to a couple of the other signings, but um, Rubio coming off the ACL is 31. Um, you had to like what you saw from him early last year before he got hurt. He, he looked really good with the Cavs. Yeah, and it wasn't just the style of play and that, you know, his play that was contributing so much. It was obviously also uh, just his leadership. He was just a, a guy who would come in, calm things down, keep the ball moving, get the ball moving when it would stick. Um, just really so many different things that he could bring in terms of not just running the show, but also – uh, you know, almost acting as a coach on the floor. So uh, invaluable, kind of knew he was coming back. Both Garland and, uh, you know, Jared Allen and some of their other players wanted him back. So uh, obviously J.B. Bickerstaff did too. So, you know, just to, once he's finally healthy, uh, even if he can't contribute as much as a player, and the Cavs are hoping he can, but even if not, he just adds those other intangibles that are so valuable with the young core. And again, coming off an ACL, he's 31, so you're not sure when he will be ready to go, uh, which leads us to our second signing. They signed uh, Raul Neto, 30 years, been in the league seven years. What does he bring, and um, is the thought, you know, that'll get you until Ricky can get back on the court? Yeah, that's the thinking, is that he can, you know, Neto will fill in until Rubio is healthy, but that said, you know, here's a guy who is really coming in on a one-year veterans minimum deal, and he's going to get every opportunity to kind of be last season's Ricky Rubio if he can. I mean, and you look at NATO, and he had a pretty decent run in Washington last season uh, in terms of his production, 7.5 points, but better than three assists. He's another guy who keeps the ball moving. He's not going to be, you know, he's nothing splashy, but as far as he's concerned, this is an opportunity to uh, kind of reset his value in the NBA. And, and you know, it, it's not all about money, but you do. You could get a bigger contract. You could find a regular role with the team. And uh, if he plays well enough, you know, who knows what will happen. So, you know, they, they tried to replace Rubio last year with, with first Tim Frazier and, and then Rajon Rondo. And now NATO is going to get every opportunity to be that veteran backup point guard behind Darius Garland. So then the other area that uh, Cavs addressed in free agency, um, backup center. And, and Robin Lopez uh, signed a one-year deal that is reportedly, again, veteran minimum. Um, how big of an upgrade is that? What does Lopez bring? What do you like about him? Well, I think Cavs fans will like his hair because he's a <laughs> lot like uh, uh, Anderson Barajow in that sense. But seriously, the guy is, uh, you know, one of those energy big guys who really just makes tons of hustle plays, uh, loves to play the game, always upbeat, uh, just seems to be, you know, look, you know, Cavs needed a veteran center to back up Jared Allen, right? You know, you're probably losing Ed Davis, who's an unrestricted free agent. They didn't. They didn't tender a qualifying offer to, to Moses Brown, so they had to do something. And we knew that they wanted to get veteran-type players off the bench. Robin Lopez has been in every type of situation, winning situation, the losing situation last year with the Magic, and always plays the same. He's just a high-energy big guy. Uh, he irritates opponents a lot with his hustle. And uh, I, I think, yes, he, he has the Anderson Barrage out type of hairdo. So uh, he should he should fit in Cleveland very well right away. Is that an upgrade um, as far as a backup center goes? That that you know when Jared Allen went out and, and you had Mobley missing time, that, that was when it became apparent you needed somebody that could just come in and, and spell people for a little bit. Yeah, he's definitely an upgrade just because he Lopez is because he's a he's a veteran, been around the battles, been around the wars, you know. He's, twin brother Brooke plays in Milwaukee. He played with Brooke for a year. Uh, he's more, Robin is more of an inside guy, more of a physical guy, a pick and roll 
guy. Uh, he's not going to hit outside shots, but he will bang down low and give you, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of energy and a lot of physical play and a lot of veteran know-how. So I, I would say for sure uh, a guy who should fit in very well. And and yeah, probably an upgrade over last season. Moses Brown did a nice job, but this is just a guy who's you know been around the league longer and knows kind of all the tricks of the trade. So the, when you look at this Cavs roster, there's a lot of guaranteed contracts and a lot of roster spots. Is is this team set, or is there a possibility that you could see a trade or two to, to try to upgrade it even more? You could certainly see a trade or two. Uh, you know, you're talking about Darius Garland, Jared Allen, and, and, and uh, excuse me, Evan Mobley, kind of as your quote-unquote big three uh you know that you still have to figure out what to do with colin sexton okay as of this minute he remains a restricted free agent and has not been signed so you know that's something that they're going to have to figure out let's say sexton does come back well now then now you have a blood of wings you have sexton you know you have your you have uh karis lavert you have chetty osmond and, and you know there's just uh, isaac okoro not to mention O.J. Ogbaje, who they drafted in the first round. Uh, you have a glut of wings, so you're going to have to figure out something. That doesn't mean you have to make a trade, but I, I think that they're going to make a trade eventually, whether it involves Colin Sexton or whether it involves, uh, you know, I know that they've been having some talks about Chetty so, or Oporo. Uh, I, I think that some of their wings stand a chance to get moved. It, maybe not some, but at least one of them. Uh, between now and the start of training camp, what do they look for in that? Is it is it a draft? Is it draft capital? What do you try to get from that piece that that maybe even adds to to this roster? Yeah, at this point, you know, you do feel pretty well set in your regular rotation uh, if you're the Cavs because there's so many players we haven't talked about, like Kevin Love, who will be back, and presumably Lamar Stevens and perhaps Dylan Windler. I mean, these are all players who have played roles for them in the past. So, uh, you know, theoretically, you probably want another big guy, um, whether it's a power forward or a center or a stretch four. Uh, you, you know, Dean Wade, of course, can fill that role too. So, yeah, if they do make a deal, it could potentially be for, for some, some draft picks. Um, but I, I don't think that they're done uh, – they have to figure out what to do with Colin Sexton. And then and then after that, then you can make bigger decisions on trades and what your needs are. But uh, I, I think the possibilities are endless. That's the nice thing about this team is that they, they have assets or they can just move forward as is and still feel pretty good about themselves. All right, before I let you go, the Brooklyn Nets are, are an absolute mess right now. The Kevin Durant um, has asked to be traded, will likely be traded. And it, it kind of all came back to Kyrie Irving. You know, he kind of forced his way out of here, um, wanted to be traded from the Cavs, didn't want to play um, with LeBron James, was basically thrown out of the locker room by the young Celtics players, um, and for whatever reason, didn't want to get vaccinated. So uh, the, the thing in, in Brooklyn kind of fell apart where there was supposed to be a big three. What does the future hold for him, and, and is it, it, it is, does a team have to be desperate to take him on at this point? I, I mean, he hadn't gotten along anywhere, basically. Yeah, last year, you know, I know that GMs and uh, execs that I was just shooting the breeze with around the league were saying they, they wouldn't want him uh, at this point simply because it always seems to come with some controversy. Obviously, a fantastic talent, by all accounts, a pretty good guy just uh, marches to a different drum and I there's certainly nothing wrong with that but you know when it comes to winning basketball games and, and winning when it means the most now Cavs fans of course will say he has <laughs> because he probably hit the biggest three-pointer in team history but you know that's uh, it, it's big risk right now to take him on um, I think a lot of GMs feel that way and you know there's so much there in, in Brooklyn that's gone wrong. And, and, you know, when they made those deals and got Durant, got Kyrie, and got Harden, and then got Ben Simmons for Harden, 
uh, they just were expected to, to really, you know, make a big run, be challenging uh, for a championship. And that's just, that just never happened. And, and, and it's just a mess right now. And, you know, it doesn't always pay to, to build a super team. Ask the Nets, ask the Lakers. Uh, it, it sometimes is a great thing to, to build from within. And we're seeing teams in the NBA be successful doing that through the draft and through wise trades. All right, before I let you run, um, real quickly, there's some talk that he could end up with LeBron and the Lakers. Is that a chance? you think Kyrie ends up with LeBron and uh, the Los Angeles Lakers? I think there's always a chance because this is the NBA and crazy things tend to happen. But... Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly think that with the way agents can help orchestrate trades and, and make sure guys are where they want to be, there's certainly a, a chance there that, that the Lakers will end up with them. And if not, you can guarantee that they will be in the conversation and probably the front runners of the conversation until he ends up somewhere else because it's the Lakers and uh, they like to create a lot of buzz. So I think it's a possibility, um, but... I, I, I don't know that, that it's going to happen. Sam Amico, I appreciate you taking uh, some time with us on this busy day where there's all kinds of things going on in the NBA. Appreciate it very much. Thanks, Sam. All right. Thanks for having me. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Sam Amico, make sure you read him, uh, Amico on hoopswire.com. Everything Cavs related as well as the NBA. Uh, again, hoopswire.com for the latest. Um, that's going on in the NBA. That's going to do it for this edition of Sports for CLE. We will see you back here Tuesday. Uh, we have the 4th of July off, so Tuesday at 4. Have a great holiday weekend, everybody. We'll see you Tuesday.